Uh, let me introduce myself. My, my name is Mert and uh, I am co-founder and CEO of Zindu Company. Uh, we are based in Turkey and we are a recruitment and talent hunting company specialized in gaming industry. Uh, so at first I want to mention you that uh, in Turkey the gaming market get uh, $425 million investment last year. And this year, first half of the year, $333 million, which is largest volume at right now in European Union countries and also Europe region. Uh, today I will mention more about our market and what we are doing uh, in our industry. Uh, so let me start. So first of all, uh, yeah, we are very friendly with gaming companies that we are working with and uh, we are focusing on their, on their issues, on talent hunting and we believe in, as it's right, obsession, pioneering and uh, being friendly, being intimate with them while we are speaking with them. Also, we are always reminding to gaming companies that they are working with people. Uh, some of gaming companies sometimes losing their control while, while they're in the development cycle. And this is why we always uh, giving them consultancy about culture and company culture, how it affects the performance of the company, how it affects the happiness in the company. Yeah, and uh, let me share about our uh, story. First of all, I'm an entrepreneur and I started this company four years ago. At that time, I was planning to, I wanted to become publisher, mobile game publisher. Uh, uh, weekend, because it was a uh, very hard times about the know-how and knowledge in our market. There was no any publisher in Turkey. Suddenly, we met with Rolic Games and uh, they said to us, if you want to engage in gaming companies, engage with the gaming companies, let you work with me, work with us, and you can scout any gaming company in Turkey to work with us as a contractor, because they were searching about a lot of contractors to produce prototypes. And a uh, few months later, uh, when the pandemic started, we find the gap, uh, because normally, in Turkey, 90% of the gaming companies hyper producing hyper-casual games, and they are the co-founders at their, their early 20s, and they don't know how to manage their HR processes, uh, even sometimes posting job posts. So we established Zindu HR, uh, which directly come into middle of the uh, industry in Turkey. So, in last four years, gaming industry grew uh, very fastly in Turkey. Uh, so let me focus on the reasons. Uh, the first, first thing first, uh, Turkey's young population is increasing day by day. I don't know why, but Turkish family is breeding a lot. Uh, <laughs> so this is maybe the reason. Uh, the I think 60% of the our population is under 35 years old. Uh, also, uh, low economical uh, situations in Turkey and also economical problems in Turkey creating big dreamers because normally graduating from university and finding mid-level job is not effective at these days. So it, it uh, provides to people to think establishing their companies. And in last four years also, a lot of game development and design departments, uh, the, the education experts uh, established in Turkey. Uh, 16, 16 university uh, giving education about video game development and uh, art at right now. Also, uh, the last reason is very important, local publishers, which is Rolik, was very generous to gaming companies uh, from monthly payments to coaching. Uh, the company developed the industry very well. Yeah, for the timeline, 
let me look at the uh, timeline, what happened in Turkey. So local entrepreneurs become aware about the potential gaming market, which is hyper casual, because four years ago there was no any console development company or kind of stuff in Turkey, but Rolik offered a really good deal for the gaming studios, and uh, a lot of people uh, started to work with Rolik. Rolik also coached hundreds of gaming companies about game design, about some game mechanics, and they were so generous also at that point. Uh, I remember that days also, they were getting them to their office and doing a lot of sessions with gaming companies. Today, some of companies has a valuation with $1 billion, and I remember that days, it was fascinating. Also, other foreign uh, mobile game publishers entered the Turkish game development market, which also add some competition uh, for the gaming studios. Uh, hundreds of games published and scaled in Turkey also, uh, investors became aware after uh, these actions. And, sorry. And after all of that, uh, as I think all you know, uh, all you guys know, Zynga acquired Rolik, which was a very big action in Turkish gaming industry. And uh, also <coughs> investors invested a lot of small amount, uh, small size gaming companies after this whole pipeline finished. So let me mention about the talent, Turkish talent pool and uh, what we did in last four years. So 37% of the talent is developer in Turkey and uh, the artist following with 28%. Uh, uh, in last three years, we provide to uh, find candidates to 340 uh, rep job replacement. Also, we worked with over 200 gaming companies and they reached more than 1 billion download. Uh, at right now, uh, there, is there are more than 8,000 people in gaming industry in Turkey. Uh, well, actually, uh, for the current situation, uh, there are more than 300 game companies. As I said to you, 90% of them are uh, hyper casual studios still and also we have some of midcore and uh, match three uh, producing gaming companies maybe you heard uh, heard about them peak games and dream games which are very old maybe established 10 years ago and uh, their valuation over two and three billion dollars but 90 90 percent of them still small studios producing casual and hyper casual games and uh, currently uh, at right now, 240 job posts uh, we analyzed in LinkedIn. Uh, the gaming companies trying to find talent at right now. Uh, and also, uh, more than 12 different universities established their game design department in last two years. For this salary side, uh, as I said to you, it's very interesting. Uh, because in Turkey uh, there is inflation uh, at the same time. Uh, the we diversified with junior, mid and senior. Uh, you can uh, see that as developer, as artist, because the salaries are similar. Uh, for the senior, uh, the ranges are like 2.5k to 8.5k. And uh, for the junior, it's like 600 to 1.5K. Uh, and also 76% uh, of the uh, talent deciding hybrid uh, working conditions. And 14% uh, percent of the talents uh, decide is remote working. We did this survey like months ago, so it's updated. And when we look at the game genre, 81% hyper casual and 11% following casual and the others. So 
uh, I also add some graphics and make this. Uh, this is a hyper casual uh, studio and publisher relations in last uh, four years. Uh, so the studio started with euphoric uh, feelings to this industry and unfortunately uh, it went into different kind of uh, situation uh, when the Apple puts IDFA to the table and kind of uh, res recession in the after pandemic affects whole industry also uh, gaming industry and uh, hyper casual genre oversaturated uh, at these days and this is what we see in Turkish gaming startups and also I prepared for the founders motivation level uh, also the founders are their early 20s uh, they are a small amount of group uh, they were like they're in their uh, second grade but drop out from the school and establish their company and also investments to the studios this is this shows investors uh, idea about uh, gaming companies hyper casual gaming companies uh, as I said to you they were hyped at first and s started slowly going down and thank you so much I'm uh, ready to any questions about Turkish gaming market and uh, HR processes thank you again thank you uh, okay, do we have any questions from the audience? If you don't have any, I will go with mine. Never mind. Maraba, <laughs> <laughs> the question is, um, why is so uh, low level of uh, females um, f f in employees? In industry, in talent pool, right? Well, actually, uh, as we analyzed in universities and also uh, in our uh, population uh, a lot of males playing games and they deciding to also develop games uh, when we look at the female side they are much likely uh, on the art side uh, not in the development side but also we have uh, some uh, NGOs in Turkey which supports the female power in gaming and they support the female employees uh, in gaming and also we see uh, if any gaming company has a C-level executive female they, they are much successful in some point and also as Zindu we are trying to increase our uh, female uh, candidates and helping them to involve the industry as males. Great, thank you. Do you have more questions? Then I'll go with oh, never mind. <laughs> yeah. Hello and thanks a lot for the presentation. Can you please evaluate on the uh, on our opportunities as uh, game development stu studios from Europe on hiring of hiring uh, Turkish individuals like talents? Mm -hmm. uh, what's the legislation behind it? What will the approximate taxes be if we? hire them as individuals and also mm -hmm. on the level of English uh, those people who talk part of your mm -hmm. survey mm -hmm. generally speak. Thanks. Thank you so much for your question. Uh, it's a really good question because at these days we are working on expanding our company to European, European gaming companies and uh, providing remote Turkish developers to the European companies. Uh, in this point we are trying to measure uh, how much people in our talent pool knows and speak technical technical English uh, while they are if, if they have a chance to work with some other foreign studios we are trying to test their English also and their motivation uh, about working directly remote uh, I can say to you at most 10% uh, up for the salary uh, as I showed uh, in the screen, at most 10% cost may affect the company, uh, but also we are working with some payment solutions. I if any remote uh, Turkish developers wants to work with European company, then we are providing some services to pay their salaries easily. And also in the recruitment side, we are uh, sending shortlists to the companies and 
uh, our main purpose is to decrease the operational expenses for the European gaming companies uh, with the talented uh, Turkish remote employees. Thank you. Uh, and I believe we have a bit of more time and I would really want to ask you about um, some tendencies maybe in the Turkish um, game developers uh, industry. Um, I forgot the English. <laughs> uh, how they perform nowadays, how they are, um, I don't know, what's the tendency of their improving and decreasing in their performance level maybe or hiring people of that age or the other age or interests, mm -hmm. whatever. Well, actually, in last one year, uh, a lot of uh, I see a lot of people in lack of motivation in Turkey, uh, especially uh, hyper casual uh, producing gaming companies and their developers, because it's a, a small amount of time cycle, uh, and they just want pub published games, and uh, it's it's such a long time. A lot of studios trying to publish and find a good CPI, good retention, uh, they did not see any uh, successful game. I see a lot of studios. Uh, I see lack of motivation, but they are so talented and working maybe 16 hours per day to, to run for this uh, successful game. And uh, they are so powerful, uh, working and going to their deadlines. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can guarantee that they can work much more than uh, European uh, game developers. Okay, so after yeah. AI, then Turkish developers are coming to take our places. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank yeah, you welcome. for the great speech.